The Americans are spending millions on such a project. Once the R-7 is flying, all we need to do is replace the warhead with the satellite and launch. Back in the day, the United States and the Soviet Union were fierce competitors, whether it was the Olympics, military armament, and even space. Great success in space when the Russians pushed a man across the threshold. That's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. Both nations wanted to surpass the other. Living inside Mars 500 means adapting to a completely artificial environment. Satellite should be long remembered as a symbol. There's a female up there circling Mother Earth. Join us as we look at declassified evidence released by NASA that shows evidence of the Soviets landing on Mars. Nineteen. The Cold War. The Cold War was a period of geopolitical conflict between the United States, the Soviet Union, and their respective allies, the Western Bloc and the Eastern Bloc, that began in 1947 following the end of World War II and lasted until 1991. The term Cold War refers to the absence of large-scale fighting between the two superpowers, yet both supported opposite sides in important regional battles known as proxy wars. The battle was rooted on these two countries' ideological and geopolitical quest for world worldwide influence after their positions as allies in World War II, which resulted in a victory over Nazi Germany and Imperial Japan in 1945. Aside from the nuclear arms race and traditional military deployment, the fight for domination was manifested indirectly through psychological warfare, media operations, espionage, broad embargoes, sports diplomacy, and technological competitions such as the space race. The Cold War began in 1947 with the introduction of the Truman Doctrine and began to wind down gradually with the Sino Soviet split between the Soviets and the People's Republic of China in 1961 and finished with the Soviet Union's collapse in 1991. 18. Mars Landing In our thumbnail, we can see a spacecraft that has landed somewhere in space. Is this the Soviet spacecraft that landed on Mars? Why don't you tell us what you think in the comments below? Reaching Mars is a difficult and punishing endeavor with little margin for mistake. A considerable fraction of the 50-odd missions sent toward Mars were lost owing to defective components, rocket faults, or catastrophic failures that sent probes crashing into the Martian surface or missing the planet entirely. Landing missions are particularly difficult due to the significant communication delay between Mars and Earth, the thin Martian atmosphere, and the fact that spacecraft and their components must survive several months in orbit before reaching the surface. We had a lot of luck with landing missions, although not all of them were successful. Mars 2, a lander manufactured by the former Soviet Union, holds the dubious distinction of becoming the first first human-made object to land on the Red Planet. Launched in 1970 alongside its sister ship Mars 3, the spherical one-ton Mars 2 lander was about the size of a kitchen stove and was planned to parachute to the Martian surface before using rockets for final braking. Despite surviving the long journey to Mars, which was already a great accomplishment, the probe crashed into the Martian soil somewhere west of the Hellas Basin, while a massive dust storm raged across the planet. Mars 3 successfully landed on December 2, 1971, in the Martian uplands of Terra Serenium after descending through the same dust storm that had prevented its predecessor Mars 2. However, 20 seconds after beginning its initial photographic scan, Mars 3's TV feed became silent permanently. The first successful landing on Mars occurred on July 20, 1976, when NASA's Viking 1 lander splashed down in Chrysi Planitia. The enormous 1,270-pound lander was dropped from an orbiting mothership and made a three-point landing with a parachute and rocket engine. 17. Soviet Manned Mission to Mars Since discoveries in astronomy revealed the possibility of life, or possibly an intelligent civilization on Mars, the planet has sparked popular curiosity in Russia, as it does in the most industrialized nations. In the artificially optimistic environment of the post-revolutionary Soviet Union, both sci-fi writers and space exploration enthusiasts chose Mars as a location for human expeditions. Mars was the most extreme example of Soviet-style revolution in Alexei Tolstoy's novel Ayelita, which was adapted into a film in 1924. However, it took several decades for the Soviet space industry's engineers to properly consider the possibility of human flight to Mars. Sergei Korolev directed OKB-1, a top-secret Soviet outfit 
that pioneered ballistic missile development in the USSR and is now known as RKK Energia. While the company was originally formed for the only goal of researching weapons delivery systems, Korolev had long been an advocate of space travel. On April 12, 1960, Korolev delivered a draft order defining the future course of the Soviet space program to the Kremlin for approval. Among the many aims stated in the letter, Korolev mentioned the development of an interplanetary spaceship with a crew of two or three that could fly over and land on the surface of Venus and Mars. On July 3, 1969, a big gathering of Soviet space experts discussed plans for a Martian journey, but the participants were not enthusiastic about the idea. Nothing ever materialized, and the fall of the Soviet Union had a negative impact on Russian Mars goals. As the old Soviet economy crumbled in the 1990s, so did government funding for all, but a few of the most pressing space projects. 16. Russian Missions to Mars From 1960 until 1988, the Soviet Union launched multiple spacecraft to probe Mars. Some of these missions were somewhat successful, while others Others failed. Overall, the Soviets had much greater success exploring Venus than the Red Planet. The Soviet Union launched at least seven missions to Mars in the 1960s, which all failed. The vehicles were either destroyed at launch, unable to leave Earth's orbit, or failed catastrophically while on their way to the Red Planet. After the Mars series was completed, the Soviets did not launch another spacecraft to the planet for 15 years. During this time, they focused their efforts on a succession of more sophisticated and mostly successful flights to Venus. Then, in July 1988, the nation launched the Phobos 1 and 2 missions in an audacious attempt to examine Mars and its small moon, Phobos. This was one of the most inventive planetary missions ever attempted, with the first close scientific examination and landing on another planet's moon. Unfortunately, they were disappointing. Phobos 1 was lost on September 2, 1988 after a controller delivered an incorrect command to the spacecraft's computer. Phobos-1 became bewildered and lost its connection with the sun. The solar cells did not perform properly, and the probe lost power. After the Soviet Union fell at the end of 1991, the Russian government attempted to continue ambitious Mars exploration efforts initiated during the USSR's closing years. The missions involved orbiters, balloons, surface penetrators, and rovers. During this time, the Russians increased their efforts to cooperate with the US, European countries, and other foreign governments. 15. Mars One Soviet Program Mars One was a modest Dutch corporation that raised funds from investors by promising to land the first humans on Mars and create a permanent human colony. It is anticipated that it received tens of millions of dollars between its introduction in 2012 and its bankruptcy filing in early 2019. The organization was not an aerospace corporation and did not produce hardware. Mars One was made up of two entities, the non-profit Mars One Foundation and the for-profit Mars One Ventures, which held the control controlling shares of the for-profit interplanetary media group, which also handled the broadcasting rights. The Mars One Foundation, headquartered in the Netherlands, oversaw the project. The little firm had four employees and planned to generate revenue by producing videos about staff selection, training, and colonization. Its CEO anticipated that the first mission, Bas Landsdorp, would cost approximately $6 billion in the 2010s. Scientists and engineers, as well as those in the aerospace industry, attacked the notion for ignoring logistics and medical problems and failing to address fundamental hardware concepts. Academics, the spaceflight industry, and worldwide news outlets all referred to the proposal as a suicide mission. On January 15, 2019, a court ruling was made to liquidate the for-profit corporation, bankrupting it in the process. 14. Descent Majula The Mars 2020 mission's shortest and most intense phase was Entry, Descent, and Landing, or EDL. It began when the spacecraft hit the top of the Martian atmosphere, moving at about 12,500 miles per hour. It ended around seven minutes later, with Perseverance remaining still on the Martian surface. To safely reduce those speeds to zero in that short period of time, while hitting a narrow target on the surface, demands slamming on the brakes in a very careful, innovative, and challenging manner. Landing on Mars is difficult, and only roughly Roughly 40% of all missions sent to Mars by any space agency have been successful. Hundreds of things must go perfectly during this nail-biting drop. Furthermore, Perseverance is responsible for handling everything on its own. During the landing, it takes more than 11 minutes to get a radio signal from Mars. So by the time the mission team learns that the spacecraft has entered the atmosphere, the rover has already landed. So Perseverance is designed to complete the entire EDL process on its own, autonomously. 13. Mariner 9 NASA's Mariner 9 beat the Soviet Mars 2, which had an 11-day lead to Mars, becoming the first spacecraft to orbit another planet. The orbiter mapped 85% of the Martian surface 
and returned more than 7,000 photographs, including those of Olympus Mons, Valles Marineris, Phobos, and Deimos. The mission's primary goal was to map approximately 70% of the surface within the first three months of operation. The dedicated imaging mission began in late November, but due to a massive dust storm, photographs of the planet taken before roughly mid-January 1972 did not reveal much information. After the dust storm receded, Mariner 9 began returning breathtaking photographs of the deeply pitted Martian surface, revealing features such as the vast system of parallel rills running more than 1,100 miles across Mare Serenum. The massive amount of incoming data challenged the idea that Mars was geologically inert. There was some suggestion that water may have existed on the surface in the past, but the spacecraft data did not give conclusive evidence. By February 1972, the spacecraft had discovered approximately 20 volcanoes, one of which was subsequently called Olympus Mons. By the time it made its last contact on October 27, 1972, when it ran out of gaseous nitrogen, the spacecraft had mapped 85% of the planet at a resolution of 0.5 to 1 mile, returning 7,329 images, including at least 80 of Phobos and Deimos, thus concluded one of the great early robotic missions of the space age, and unquestionably, one of the most impactful the spaceship was anticipated to crash onto the Martian surface around 2020. 12. Mars 2 and 3 In 1971, the former Soviet Union launched the Mars 2 and Mars 3 missions to Mars. Each consisted of an orbiter and a lander. Both orbiter missions were successful, despite the surface of Mars being hidden by a dust storm that encircled the planet. The Mars 2 lander crashed. Mars 3 made the first successful soft landing on the Red Planet. However, it ceased broadcasting after only 14.5 seconds for unclear reasons. Hardware from a Soviet spacecraft that landed on Mars in 1971 may appear appear in photographs from NASA's Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter. While following news about Mars and NASA's Curiosity rover, Russian citizen enthusiasts discovered four features in a five-year-old image from the Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter that matched four parts of Soviet Mars, three hardware, the parachute, heat shield, terminal retro rocket, and lander. 11. Mars 4 Orbiter Mars 4 was a Soviet spacecraft designed to investigate Mars. A 3MS spacecraft launched as part of the Mars program was supposed to enter orbit around Mars in 1974. However, computer issues prevented orbital insertion from happening. Mars 4 was launched by a Proton-K carrier rocket with a Bloke-D upper stage from the Baikonur Cosmodrome. The launch took place on July 21, 1973, with the first three stages placing the spacecraft and upper stage in a low-Earth parking orbit before the Block D fired, propelling Mars 4 into heliocentric orbit destined for Mars. On July 30, 1973, shortly after conducting a course correction, two onboard computers failed preventing Mars 4 from performing operations. As a result, it was unable to orbit Mars. 10. Heliocentric Orbit A heliocentric orbit is one that revolves around the solar system's barycenter, which is often located on or near the Sun's surface. All the solar system's planets, comets, and asteroids, as well as the Sun, are in such orbits as are numerous artificial probes and debris. In contrast, the moons of planets in the solar system orbit their respective planets rather than heliocentrically. While the solar system's barycenter is always relatively close to the Sun, it moves through space over time depending on where other major entities in the solar system System, such as Jupiter and other massive gas planets, are at the time. A similar phenomena enables the discovery of exoplanets using the radial velocity approach. The first spacecraft to be put in a heliocentric orbit was Luna 1 in 1959. 9. The Vega Camera During the late 1960s and 1970s, the Apollo program utilized several television cameras on space missions. Some of the Apollo TV cameras were subsequently utilized on subsequent Skylab and Apollo Soyuz test project missions. These cameras differed in design, with image quality improving dramatically with each subsequent generation. These distinct camera systems were made by two companies, RCA and Westinghouse. Originally, these slow-scan television cameras, which ran at 10 frames per second, only recorded black and white images and were launched on the Apollo 7 mission in October 1968. The Apollo 10 mission in May 1969, as well as all subsequent missions, featured a color camera that used a field sequential color scheme. The color camera operated at 30 frames per second, which is the North American norm. The cameras all used image pickup tubes, which were originally delicate, with one being irreversibly broken during the live transmission of the Apollo 12 mission's first moonwalk. Beginning with the Apollo 15 mission, a more durable, damage-resistant camera was deployed on the lunar surface. All these cameras required signal processing on Earth to ensure that the frame rate and color encoding met analog broadcast television requirements. 8. 
dust storm. Dust storms can encompass thousands of square kilometers, heavy snowfall in temperatures of 200 degrees below zero, swirling dust devils, which can sometimes turn into monster tornadoes, fill the atmosphere with fine pink dust that turns the sky red. Where can you find weather phenomena like this? Mars, like Earth, has a seasonal climate, volcanoes, deserts, and polar ice caps. A typical day on Mars may be gorgeous and clear, with no cloud in the bright pink sky. A gentle breeze may cause merely a few wisps of dust to rise. The atmosphere on Mars is a hundred times thinner than on Earth. Mars's atmosphere is so thin, and there are no oceans to store heat from the sun, so temperatures can vary faster and more violently than on Earth. It might be as warm as 60 degrees Fahrenheit, and a few days later, however, the temperature may drop below minus 150 degrees Fahrenheit, with dazzling clouds of water crystals forming in the sky. The following week, a dust storm might cover the entire planet with an opaque yellow haze. Changes as drastic as these occur all the time on Mars, with the planet suffering rapid shifts from dusty and scorching to cloudy and frigid. Even though Mars has a limited atmosphere, its winds can reach astounding speeds. Wind speeds reported at the two Viking lander sites were typically 10 miles per hour or less, with gusts reaching 30 miles per hour. 7. Prop M Prop M were two Soviet Mars rovers launched as part of the unsuccessful Mars 2 and Mars 3 missions in 1971. Prop M were the first rovers launched to Mars 26 years before NASA's Sojourner successfully completed its first rover mission in 1997. Because the Mars 2 and Mars 3 missions failed, the existence of the rovers was kept hidden for nearly two decades. A team led by Alexander Komergian created the rovers, which were small, rectangular machines attached to the lander and moved on skis. One rover is currently on display at Moscow's Memorial Museum of Cosmonautics, while another is in St. Petersburg's Museum of Space and Missile Technology. 6. Mars 5 Mars 5 was a Soviet spacecraft designed to investigate Mars. It successfully orbited Mars in 1974. However, it failed a few weeks later. The spacecraft's engines fired to start the orbit insertion burn, which successfully placed it in an aerocentric orbit. The spacecraft's pressurized instrument container began to leak as soon as it entered the Mars orbit, which operators assumed was caused by a micrometeoroid hit during orbital insertion. It halted operations on February 28th after returning 180 photographs frames. 5. Rover Jezero Crater Scientists were shocked when NASA's Perseverance Mars rover began investigating rocks on the floor of Jezero Crater in the spring of 2021. They expected to find sedimentary rock in the crater because it previously hosted a lake billions of years ago. Instead, scientists discovered that the floor was composed of two types of igneous rocks. One originated deep down from magma, while the other resulted from volcanic activity near the surface. Igneous rocks make good timekeepers because crystals within them stored information about the exact moment they formed. One significant advantage of the igneous rocks they obtained is that they informed them when the lake was present in Jezero. They knew it existed prior to the formation of the igneous crater floor rocks. This would eventually answer some big questions. For example, when did Mars's climate support lakes and rivers on the planet's surface, and when did it shift to the very cold and dry conditions we see today? 4. Mars Sample Return Mission MSR Mars Sample Return is a proposed expedition that would return samples from Mars's surface to Earth. The project would use robotics and a Mars Ascent rocket to collect and send samples of Martian rocks, soils, and atmosphere to Earth for chemical and physical examination. The mission is being developed collaboratively with the European Space Agency. 3. Soviet Alita Nuclear Mars Concept The Soviet Alita was an odd design. It would have been launched with two N1M rockets and weighed around 150 tons. It was 175 meters in length, with the three portions serving as heat radiators taking up most of the length. These were hollow, slid into each other, and were extremely light. The asymmetrical shield in the front was the landing module's aeroshell, which would transport a three-part, six-wheeled Mars train. After passing through the radiation belts, four crew members boarded a modified LOK Lunar Soyuz. 2. India's Mars Mission Over a decade after its launch, India's first expedition to Mars, Mangalyaan, has finished its voyage. The Mars Orbiter mission has apparently run out of propellant, making it difficult to restart in the Red Planet's orbit. This development reinforces speculation that the mission is ultimately complete. The Indian Space Research Organization, which operates the spacecraft circling Mars, has not yet commented on whether the probe can be revived. Sources say there is no fuel left in Mangalyaan, the satellite battery has drained, and apparently, the link has been lost. The project already exceeded expectations by remaining active for more than eight years, despite being designed for a six-month trip around the Martian orbit. 
1. Mars Successful Missions Since the 19th century, scientists have proposed trips to Mars. For decades, the government space program has aimed to explore Mars. Some of the most successful initial trips to Mars include Mariner 4, 6, 7, and 9, as well as many of the Viking missions. Many other missions were successful as well, such as the Mars Pathfinder, Odyssey, and Express, among a slew of others. Maybe one day, new missions will reveal life on the Red Planet. It's incredible that space agencies were able to send crafts that reached Mars as early as the 1960s. Which one was your favorite? Why don't you let us know in the comments below? Well, that's it for now. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please give us a like and let us know in the comments what you think. Check out our other videos and subscribe to be part of the fun. Click on the notification icon so you can see our new videos as soon as they're uploaded. Thank you for watching and see you next time.